Well, hello, and thank you for joining us again for Thought for the Day. And as always, we come to God in prayer. Our loving Heavenly Father, thank you for this new day. Thank you that you are ever the same. But Lord, show us your truths from your word, we pray, through the power of your Holy Spirit. May we indeed praise your name aright as we hear these verses this morning. We ask it for Jesus' sake. Amen. Well, today our passage is Ephesians chapter 3 and verses 20 and 21. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, for ever and ever. Amen. Well, so far in Ephesians, we have noticed the richness of Paul's prayers. And another hallmark has been the richness of Paul's doxologies, with which he ends the great doctrinal sections of his letter. And a doxology is an exclamation of praise. And Paul writes them because, as we know, the whole purpose of his theology is that God should be glorified. Truly is it said that you need a theology before you can truly sing a doxology. After all, you can't truly sing and praise a God who you don't know much about. Well, Paul's concern as he concludes this third chapter of his letter is that we've heard all these wonderful things, like in verse 19, being filled to the measure of the fullness of God. And we'll say to ourselves, oh, that's wonderful. And I'm sure that's true for people like Paul and Martin Luther and John Calvin and Charles Spurgeon, but not for me. And so Paul reproves our doubts and encourages us to faith by praising God for being able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, verse 20. And this doxology is so awesome that our English translations struggle to give the full effect to it. And not one of them really does Paul's Greek full justice as he lays layer upon layer to extol the greatness of God's power. First he says, now to him who is able to do. So our God is able to do things, he's a God of action. But then he adds the word immeasurably or as the King James has it, abundantly. Whenever God does a work, it's always an abundant work. But Paul's still far from finished, for he then adds another layer. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more. And then there's another layer actually omitted in the NIV. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably far more. Such is Paul's unbridled enthusiasm for conveying the might and infinite ability of God. And finally, immeasurably far more than we can ask or imagine. Paul wants us to know that our prayers and our minds could never exhaust the power of God to work his will in us. John Newton has this wonderful truth in one of his hymns, Thou art coming to a king, large petitions with thee bring for his grace and power are such none can ever ask too much so what does this mean for us today what will god do if we truly walk with him by faith what will he make of your life and of mine and the answer is far abundantly more than we can ask or imagine and why What's the purpose? Paul tells us in verse 21, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. It's all to the eternal glory of God, to the eternal glory of his church and the eternal glory of his son, Jesus Christ. As the reformers was fond of putting it solely Deo Gloria, to God alone be glory. Now there's a challenge. So let those words be the way which we live for him today. To God alone be glory. 
Let's pray. Lord, these are humbling words. Lord, they are words which our minds almost cannot take in. They are so great and so awe-inspiring. But Lord, may we truly be challenged today to live our lives truly to the praise and glory of your holy name. To seek to live in a way that brings glory to you. And may our hearts then ring with a doxology of praise to you. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.